Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are coming back to an AI tool that I previously did a video on, although it's been quite some time and they've made some really big improvements and added some new tools. So this one is called SciSpace. We access it currently at typeset.io and it's got some really good handy tools for any kind of researcher. It does literature review, it does explanations and summaries. And I thought it was well worth time. We came back, looked at the new additions that they've made in a dedicated video. So let's jump in. Here we are on the home page, and we can see that, like most sites of this kind, we've got a search box. It's got some suggested questions we could ask. We can see that it quite likes questions, and we've got the tip here if you're asking a question, add a question mark to get better results. So actually, asking research questions rather than just searching for keywords. If we come over to the left here, we can see that we have a number of different tools. We have a library where we can sort any articles that we've uploaded. We can see I've got one there. We can have separate collections. We can also import from Zotero. Uh, so that's some nice handy functionality. If we come back down, we've got literature review, the Copilot, and the Copilot also has a Chrome extension that we can use in Chrome and here in Brave browser as well. Got a citation generator, a paraphraser, and an AI detector. So those last three, they're okay. They do do what they say, but there are alternatives. But the really, really powerful ones are the literature review, and in particular, the Copilot. And so the Copilot and the fact that you can access it via extension, which I'll also show you, really, really helpful. So let's start with the literature review. Coming back to this, I tested this last time, so we'll start off with one of their questions, and then I will try. One from one of my research areas and just see how it goes. Last time it did a pretty good job. So looking at these, how does social media affect college selection process? Sure, why not? So we click on it and it does a bit of searching, takes a little while. One question I had on one of my earlier videos and I haven't actually yet established, but I should get in contact and ask, is exactly what journals uh, do get searched here. Certainly my experience has been that it is Similar ones to what we get in Google Scholar, uh, particularly when it comes to the ones where there is full access versus just abstracts. And so we can see here that we have searched for this question. We have the insight from the top five papers. So it does a summary, has the references for that summary, which is really nice. And then we have the paper. So down here, we've got each of the papers linked up where possible. Uh, we've got the PDFs as well, which is really nice. How many times it's been cited and then little insights. So it's reviewed either the abstract or the whole paper. It's pulled out some key features for us. There's other columns we can add here. So the interface has definitely improved from last time. This was just kind of a little box in the corner last time. We can maybe add a results column and sort of do a bit of thinking and we can see that it is Pulling bits and pieces, looks like it had a bit of difficulty there on that one. But in general, all the rest pretty good. Uh, other bits and pieces, limitations, contributions, methods used. So methods used could be another handy one to add. And we can see they didn't get into super detail. So survey questionnaire, ideally we'd like to see the something a little bit more specific on that. But it also depends what's actually mentioned in the paper. Sometimes papers can be pretty bad with that themselves. So looks like it did a pretty good job. Let's try it with one of my research questions. Okay, so this was one that I actually asked in my previous video. And so I was asking about whether the Reynolds Adolescent Depression Scale is valid in New Zealand. And it has given a good list. It's a different order. One of the reasons I asked it was that I was expecting an article that I wrote to come up somewhere in the list. What is quite interesting here is that it actually mentions a number of countries where I specifically was asking about New Zealand. New Zealand is listed there. And when we go to this reference, number three... Uh, so this one here, instead of quoting, so this was actually Spanish study, but when we jump over into it, we see that it does mention my article about New Zealand. So rather than quoting me directly, it's actually found an article and then quoted the article that's quoting me. 
What I noticed though, and I think this is mostly good, is that it is favoring the open access journals. So we can see here the first three are all open access. So you can actually go in and read them. Whereas my article, and if we scroll down a few more, we can see that it is here, bottom of the page. So this one is not open access, so you'd be able to read the abstract, but that's all. It does correctly identify uh, some of the stats that we had there, so the Cronbach's alphas and so on. One thing, I guess, is that this is an article from 2005. It is starting to get a little bit old, and so I suspect that was part of why it is not as high on the list, as well as it not being open access. So in terms of actually answering the question that I asked some of these articles are definitely going to do it although the fact that the very first two here insights text does not prove so that's not great it's favored open access over something that actually answers the question I think this is going to be very much a case of depending on what you ask and how specific because this is a pretty specific question if we think about this particular depression measure, there's some reasonable amount of research in it, but only a small fraction is actually being uh, done in New Zealand. If we do jump into these articles, though, as we saw this one here, it does reference studies from elsewhere, including my own. So overall good, and certainly this uh, summary, this insights summary at the top is pretty on point, so it does a good job there. Okay, so that's a couple of examples of the literature review. If we now jump over to the Copilot, Copilot is one of the really excellent features and is definitely much more user friendly. It was definitely one of the standout features when I looked at this site last time, but I think it's gotten even better. So with our Copilot, we can drag and drop a uh, file. I've already done one. We can also just use ones that are on the web. So I've uploaded an article. And one of the things that I really, really like is they now have, as well as being able to just select a piece of text and get it explained, you can now do that for tables and for mathematical equations. So this is a pretty basic paper from a conference some number of years ago. The only equation that's in there is this one. And so I clicked on Explain Math. I selected this. We can see that it carried it over. And actually in bullet points, it's gone through and it's explained what this formula does. And it's got a pretty much bang on. I'm going to be experimenting a lot more with some more complex formulae. But this is definitely really, really handy. If you're reading an article and you come up against something probably more complex than this, this is a pretty straightforward one, and you can just select and get an explanation of what it means, that's really, really helpful. So that's a new feature and I was very, very impressed by it. But Copilot actually lets you do a whole lot of other stuff. So down here, if we have a click at some of the options, so in addition to just selecting something, I can ask it for two line explanation of the abstract, contributions, find related papers. There's a whole lot of different things, conclusions. In addition to accessing the Copilot here within SciSpace, we also have it as a Chrome extension. So we can install the extension and it works in Chrome and in Brave. We can come over to an article and we'll see that we've got this little, little launch copilot up here in the top corner. So whenever I'm on a page that has an article or something that I want to explore further, I just click launch copilot. It is going to launch there and then I can select something. So I was looking at this one. I previously did this. So we select hierarchical linear modeling. Maybe I'm not quite sure what that means. Click on explain text and it is going to give me an explanation. Uh, so we can see here, gee, second time round, gave me a slightly more extended explanation. I don't know if that's because I already did it and me doing it a second time meant that it thought I needed more information, but it gives a general description of what that is. In this particular context where it's schools, we can have schools and teachers nested within schools. We're trying to capture that variation separately within our model. It's a really nice clear explanation and having this in the, as an extension means we don't need to go back to the main website. We can just pull this up whenever we need it. We can also come down the bottom. We can just ask general questions or we can use their pre-built questions. We can even brainstorm questions as well. What are the contributions of this paper? And we can see here it has given us a nice little bullet pointed list of some contributions. We can come back. If we go brainstorm questions, then it gives me other 
questions that I might be interested in. So we can see that these new questions are specific to the topic. So rather than these generic, what are the conclusions? Now we have some very paper specific questions. So we can click on those and really go down a bit of a rabbit hole if we would like. So coming back to the main SciSpace page. So we've looked at literature review, we've looked at Copilot. We'll briefly look at these last three. So citation generator, I like where this is heading. It's probably not quite there yet. So what we can do is we can enter the URL or the title of a journal article. We can search. It will do its best to try and populate information and then we can generate a citation of a particular style. And this is okay. And particularly if we are interested in some of these more unusual styles, they can be quite handy. But this is something that you can do in Google Scholar. So in Google Scholar, there's little speech marks. You click on that, it will generate the citation for you. If you're not using something like EndNote or Zotero, so some sort of referencing software already. So Citation Generator is new. They're still working on it. I've had a bit of a play. It's pretty good, but we do have other options for getting those. Okay, next one is the paraphraser. This one is potentially a little bit controversial because it is something that could get misused. But basically you can put in a piece of text, you can get it to paraphrase. I think that a legitimate use for this where it would be very handy is where I'm trying to write a paragraph or a piece of writing and it's just a bit clunky or the expression's not quite what I want. I can use the paraphrasing tool and I can see some alternate ways of phrasing this thing that I want to say. Where I get concerned is where people start using tools like this in the same way that they use ChatGPT just as an alternate to doing their own writing. And I think if you do that, that's where you do start to get yourself into trouble because if you're not looking at what you're writing, two things are going to happen. One, potentially there's going to be hallucinations that can just make the stuff up. Or in this case with the paraphrasing, it can kind of alter the meaning of what you're saying. The other thing is that your writing will start to become quite obviously artificial intelligence generated. I've had a couple of things that I've reviewed recently where it was really clear cut. One of them, they even in the acknowledgements acknowledged Chap GPT. So they, they had been upfront that they'd used it to write the uh, particular piece of writing, but it just wasn't great writing as a result. It was very formulaic, used particular words that Chat GPT seems to favor, but normal human beings don't. So the last of the tools, the AI detector, so the AI detector I've had a bit of a play with. Pretty much all the AI detectors have an issue with false positives. This one is not necessarily any better or worse. I like that there's the scientific non-scientific tab because scientific writing tends to have a much more particular structure that can generate those false positives. Here we can see I've only thrown in two sentences. I'd done a whole lot of tests of this earlier. When we're looking at short ones, uh, there's far less we can read into it. But this is a piece of published work of mine from more than 10 years ago. So definitely not AI written, but it does highlight the particular areas. If we gave it a bigger piece of text, it would highlight particular sentences. Its success with getting true positives was good. It was definitely able to, when something was written by these things, correctly identify it. Didn't really hit too many false negatives did hit a couple of false positives, but certainly compared to the other ones that I've tested, I would put it on par with those. I probably wouldn't use this much just because I do have that concern about the false positives. I might just out of curiosity, if I was reading or reviewing some work, might throw something in there just to see what it said, but I'd still be taking those results with a grain of salt. They do have some good FAQs here. That's uh, definitely worth a read don't think they mention their false positive rate. But anyway, that's kind of one of the little side tools. Really, the, the two that stand out to me, Literature Review, really nice convenient way of being able to source articles and get some good little summaries and also get those extra columns in there where it can tell us about the results and methods and those other columns that we were able to add in here. I like the addition of showing you when the PDF is available. I like when it shows you that it's open access and I like that you can look off to the copilot and the copilot I think is really the, the most powerful part of the site and also the Chrome extension of the copilot as well. 
So really, to me, that's the bit that I would be really recommending, particularly the addition of the explain math and table component. I think that's something that I haven't really seen well done anywhere else. So that's it for today. I hope this re-review of SciSpace has been helpful. If you haven't tried it out, I would definitely recommend it, uh, particularly the Copilot. Adding it as an extension, nice and easy and very useful when you're working in the other databases and Google Scholar and other sites with articles. And the literature review, also pretty good as well. I'll be back soon with more videos about AI, research, stats, R, and random stuff.